Hey, what's up, guys? It's Chris here, and today I want to show you how to make your virtual synths sound more analog. All right, so before we jump in, if you are new here to this channel, click on the subscribe button below and the notification bell so you don't miss a thing. And guys, don't forget to share and to like this video. All right, so let's jump into it. A few weeks ago, my good friend Manu Robin came in the studio with his Roland Juno 106, which is a very cool analog synth that came out in the 80s. And we decided to have a bit of fun and compare that to the Juno LX V2 from Tal, which is a uh, replica of the Juno 60 which is the big brother of the Juno 106. Now the 106 is laid out differently than the uh, Juno 60 and there's some other features that are not the same, but as far as the sound goes, they are typically the same thing. Now, some will argue that they don't quite sound the same, but if you wanna take a look, I found a very cool video on YouTube that is not from this channel, but it is a very cool video to watch if you want to know more about that. That compares the 106 to the Juno 60. So I'm going to leave the link on top here and in the description down below if you want to take a look. So we did compare the Juno 106 with uh, the uh, Juno LX V2 by taking some go-to sounds from a Manu's 106 and try to replicate them into the plugin. And the, um, the result was quite impressive, to be honest with you. Now we tried our best to um, to replicate the same sounds, okay, um, from the, the the 106 to the uh, uh, the Uno LX um, Virtual Synth, and uh, we came very close. There's still a bit of differences tone-wise that I just want to shape a bit in my session, just to you know bring um, the the plugin a bit more close to the analog unit. Okay, so uh, let me go into Cubase here and have you listen uh, to what I did to one of the parts here. Okay, so I'm gonna have you listen to the original 106. Okay, and now the uh, Uno LX V2. Okay, now like it's so close that you know at that point it's hard to tell so what i did i added a few plugins just to enhance the sound a bit and um just to get rid of that um that edgy sound that we we um we usually find on virtual instruments uh, when we compare them to an analog unit um so if i remove all of my plugins and we have a listen I'm going to bring back the plugins. Okay, sounds pretty good. So what I have on my plugin chain, 
Um, first, I have the Britson, which is a console emulation plugin. And I have the UAD Studer, which is a um, tape simulation plugin. And that will help to just add a bit of that analog uh, vibe. Now, I would suggest you to use very good monitors or a good pair of headphones if you want to listen to uh, these uh, samples, because um, the, the differences is kind of subtle. So if you're watching this video on your phone or a cheap system, it's going to be hard to tell the difference when I'm doing a before and after. Um, so after the... Um, console emulation and the tape emulation plugin, I have a NEQ where I just add a bit of uh, 100 hertz and I just made a cut into the high mid section at 3.1K and 5.6K um, just to smooth the, uh, the top a bit. And then I added the plugin mix Clarisonics plugin, which adds some uh, low end harmonics to the sound. Because we noticed that something that was missing in general with the plugin was um, the low end that we weren't able to get um, compared to the Juno 106 that has a lot of bottom end. But in the end, in a busy mix, I always end up adding a low cut filter anyways, just to get rid of the, the low end of the track. So that doesn't bother me a lot. So I have the Clarisonics to uh, to fill the void if I need to, but in a busy mix, I'm not even gonna go and add the Clarisonics anyways. All right, so now let's go to the next sound. Uh, let's listen to this one. Now the Uno LX. So again, super close. I really liked the result. So I did basically the same thing. I added my console emulation, my tape emulation plugin, a bit of EQ, and same type of EQ here. And again, the Clarisonics, just to add a bit more bottom end. Uh, so let's uh, listen to before and after. So first, without the plugins. And now with the plugins. Okay, let's listen to the Juno 106 one more time. And the Juno LX. So it is very, very close. On a side note, I'm a big fan of the sound of the Juno 106. So the Juno LX appeals to me a lot. That's why I used it on several productions and I'm planning to use it more. Now you can find yourself a used the Juno 106 on eBay for around $1,500. And same for the Juno 60. Uh, but this time at around $4,500 on eBay. But you can get the Juno LX V2 for around $60 us which is quite cheap and as you you know as you can tell with uh, virtual instrument you can get so close to uh, what you get with the analog version so if you're a fan of these type of sounds it is very accessible so if you want to know more about the uno lx v2 i'm going to leave the link in the description down below go and take a look. I actually, you have access to a demo version if you want to try it out. So this is how I make my virtual synths sound more analog. Now, if you have any comments or questions, or if you want to share your own technique, please leave all of your comments down below. And don't forget to share and to like this video if the video was useful for you. Again, if you're new here, please feel free to subscribe to this channel. All right, guys, until next time, see you.